Here's the weird part about this install. I'm gonna keep reminding you guys that there's a private Facebook group called Karma Speed. That's where all of us as a community can come together, help each other, answer questions. Positive energy only, no negativity, no dumb questions. We're all helping each other out. There's over 300 people already. Link in the description, please join that, as well as follow the Karma Speed Instagram because we're posting all of your guys' cars. So if you wanna talk, Facebook, if you wanna check out stuff on Instagram, boom, there you go. Then you can get all the entertainment on the YouTube channel. So I appreciate you guys, I'm gonna keep reminding you, and also the merch drop at the beginning of June. So look out for that. Let's get into the video. I love everything about the Mustang so far. Coming from a JDM background to getting my first muscle car, this has been nothing but a blast. This car impresses me on the freeway. It's super comfortable daily driving. I'm honestly liking it way more than I thought I would. But the one thing that I've always hated about the Mustangs is the gauge cluster. Now don't get me wrong, it's iconic, it's muscle car-ish. Some people probably love it to death, but it's something from a JDM guy going to this. It was the one thing for the last, since I could remember, you know, being little. I, every Mustang I see, I'm like, I don't like the gauge cluster. I don't want to say it's boring because that's a negative word, but to me, I guess it is that, and um, I just was super bummed about getting this car and dealing with, like, the you know gauges like everything about the new s550s is so top notch you know technology to the outside just everything's up with the times except the gauge cluster i feel like but then when i was shopping around i saw that the new ones come with the digital gauge cluster and then i found out that they make a kit that's plug and play for the older ones so it's a no-brainer i'm gonna save my money i'm gonna go buy a used one with higher miles save some cash put all that money into mods on top of it and I found out that a company called Infotainment makes this gauge cluster. Now, I just wanted to preface that, give you a little background on this unexpected mod, but I'm talking about it so much because I am floored. I haven't been this excited about a mod in a while because the gauges are the only thing you stare at besides the road when you're driving the car 99% of the time. So to change the look of that to something that feels very 2020-ish, oh, pump. What this kit includes is new switches for your steering wheel because we're gonna be moving some things around. These are actually Ford products that they send in this complete kit. Um, this is what's awesome about infotainment is you pay one big price and you get everything you need so this install can go as smoothly as possible. Here's more switches. We're gonna be moving the volume switch to the other side of the steering wheel and whatnot that you will see very soon. Here is another piece of the steering wheel for the bottom half. And then this is a new, I believe it's called clock spring. Um, you need to update this one to a newer one and um, everything is plug and play. It's super simple. So that's right, it comes with that as well. Now this is the bezel for the new screen to sit in. Oh man, look at this thing. So nice. Comes with the air vent and all. Look at that big piece. That's where our screen's gonna be. I am so excited. Now let's look at the actual part. This is gonna be rad, look at this thing. It's a nice piece of tech right here. The only major modification that's not plug and play as a that's a part of this whole process that you will see is this guy is a lot thicker and we have to cut out a um, backing of part of what's in the car you'll see um, to make it fit. So that's one thing to take note of. Let's get into taking the car apart and get ready to put this in. Plastic trim pry tool, baby flathead screwdriver, T20 torx socket, seven millimeter socket, small baby ratchet, but I'm going to use my baby impact, 24 millimeter socket, and to make my seven millimeter and my 20, I'm gonna add this adapter for the mini impact, a large adapter for the 24 millimeter, or a ratchet that will work with the 24. A little pick, eight millimeter socket, a Dremel, 10 millimeter for disconnecting the battery, the negative terminal, and then our magnetic bowl, so that we can put any screws, tools, etc., in and not lose anything. Now all these tools, I have a link in the description of every video, just so you guys know. I talk about it all the time. 
super important. There's a tools you need um, Amazon list for all your garage necessities. I took some time to make that, so if you ever need tools, that link helps me out, helps you out, good to go. Let's go ahead and get inside the car and uh, start taking everything apart. This is actually not intimidating. I'm excited for some of you guys to install this. Send me some photos on Instagram, please. Step one. Disconnect the battery. This screwdriver was a little bit too short. I had to get a little bit of a longer one. And this one isn't even a flat head. It doesn't seem to matter. But you stick the screwdriver through this hole. And you're gonna feel around for a spring. It did kind of throw me off a little bit. You're gonna push it in, and then you're gonna pull the airbag off on each side. There's two of them. These little springs that hold this guy on. There we go. We're gonna still need this flat head though because these orange clips right here, we're gonna get on them, press them up like this. This is for the airbag. And then we can go ahead and pull these guys off, wiggle them lightly, pry this red one out, push that red clip back in there. This is why you wanna disconnect the battery because the airbag, you don't want that going off. You don't wanna be hitting the horn repeatedly, etc. 24 millimeter on the impact. We're going to remove the steering wheel now. Got that bolt out magnet tray now we can go ahead and slide this off carefully look to the top gray plug remove it make sure your airbag cables come out of there set our steering wheel aside now there's a tab on the back side of here we're going to get to but let's disconnect this guy back here and then on the back side there's another wire over here press that in pull it out of the back Pull that tab, kind of lift up, pry back, and it should come off like so. We could go put the other clock spring on, but we're not going to. Next thing we're gonna do is start removing trim pieces. I have this here piece. I'll pull out, don't stress, you just have clips, they're not gonna break. We're gonna remove these two seven millimeter bolts or screws. Remove this one up top here as well. Pull out these lights very carefully. Remove this easy plug on the back of here. I love how simple these plugs have been so far. I'm gonna pull this guy down now very carefully. And then we're gonna remove this cable right here for our hatch or our trunk, I mean. We gotta remove this. This also has a cable in it. Just gonna leave that like that. We need to go to the passenger side. Gonna remove this guy. Oh, looks like it was already kind of coming down for some reason. Then this guy's gonna pull off. Don't wanna force it. Let's move our mob armor mount. Ah, oh, so scary. The last thing you want to do is make all this rattle but these are all like pop clips. They actually work really well. Everything plastic is detached now. We're gonna remove these seven millimeter bolts in here. Oh, we got some on the outside. There's four total. Now this whole thing should pop out. Just doesn't seem right on such a nice car to do all this, but it'll be worth it. Oh, finger. I'll remove this clip. It's never as easy as it looks online. I'll tell you that first. I try and make these videos as accurate as possible and this little guy right here is giving me the most trouble of anything right now. This is so stupid. Oh my gosh. Where did my little flathead go? All right, let's try this little pick. There we go, I just gotta destroy that little guy. No big deal. All right, stock gauge cluster is out. Now we've got these two eight millimeters. Pull these two guys out. Here's the weird part about this install is you have to dremel out this piece of plastic. Now, I need to make it very clear though. This post and this bolt hole is key. We're leaving it in place. And what we're doing is just deleting this big piece right here and we gotta dremel out the big piece to make sure that we can fit everything behind here because this new cluster needs more room than the stock one. So what I'm gonna do is make a line here, 
make a line here and make a line up here and over here and we'll get it out of here. Should be a mess, but we're gonna vacuum it up. job jeez okay plug in our cable holder that we destroyed still works now we this in here kind of lining everything up in here all right that looks good ones that are plastic screws go in this one. Let's plug our light switch back in. Grab our new clock spring. Plug our wire in. Plug this one in the back. Get center. Now it's time to do some surgery on the steering wheel. Cars 2018 and over are only changing buttons on the right side. If you have 2015 to 2017, like myself, then you're gonna be changing buttons on both sides. We're changing the volume to over here. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and take our T20 Torx and remove this guy over here. Pull up on it a little bit, be careful. Now, now we can replace it. It's three bolts. Everything's sturdy. All right, we can plug this in. Set this back in there. Make sure all of our plastic lines up the way it should. That is it for the left side. We are not touching the cruise control. Now we're gonna do the call button and change this to our okay button and our arrows. Push on that tab, pull this out. If you notice, both of these are green and the other side was gray. Oh, that rips out of your hand fast. Notice that I'm not putting any like torque to it. Just till it's tight, because we're dealing with plastic. All right, I'm gonna leave that there. Oh, this one has another one behind it. Oh wow, this comes with this whole piece, okay. Ah, that makes life easy. I didn't know you could get a screwdriver in there without taking apart this housing. I didn't even need to do that. So don't be like me. Just get in there with a screwdriver right here and pry it out. GoPro guide, the show must go on. Oh, love to hear that sound. And we're set, we have our new buttons. Let's make sure everything feels pretty good, everything's mounted well. All right, let's go in the car. Let's run our airbag wires through the top so we have enough slack, not through the bottom. Clip in our wire, make sure nothing gets caught up. Let's 
springs pop in. I think that's it. We can uh, plug the battery back in. Work, please work, please work, please work, please work. Oh! Dude! This is sick! Comfort mode. Sport plus. That's out. like some supercar type stuff. Really digging this setup on the up arrow. We can do like average speed, tire pressure, fuel economy, trip one and two. Um, if we want, I kind of like it black in the middle, but uh, this is actually a really chill layout for daily driving. Let's go to, and you don't have to have it in sport mode to get it to change different uh, gauge layouts. You can set your own custom mode, but I kind of like how it changes with it because it goes exactly with my mood. So if I'm just like a peppy, I'm gonna, you know, want to go fast mood kind of, but not slide around a corner, then this uh, sport plus mode is great. Listen to the blinker too, it changes pitch. It's like the newer Fords, I love that. It's so much more subtle. That never gets old. Not only do you have the Coyote provoking you to rev it, but now the gauges are just like, please rev it, it's fun. Isn't that great. are frothing at the mouth if you don't have this gauge set up already and you have an s550 no brainer for sure there's a link in the description i really appreciate infotainment supporting the channel and letting us show you guys all of the rad features and just the whole product in general that is a game changer you stare at it the most while driving next thing i want to do is kind of get like a gt350 style steering wheel that's kind of suede or alcantara oh i'm falling more and more in love with this car um, it's super late, I've done two videos today already, and I was so pumped on this mod, I had to get it done tonight, so don't forget, link in the description. If you guys are new here, Karma Speed, the brand on the channel, is all about building confidence in the garage, learning every car we can, DIY modifying it ourselves after we get it, and also learning everything we need to know before buying it. So right now we're working on the Mustang and such, so join the ride, hit the subscribe button, join the community, we have the Facebook group, um, that we just made it's private. I'll have a link in the description. You guys can get help there It's only positive vibes in there. No negativity you get kicked out um, It's kind of what the car scene needs in my opinion It's just the right-minded people in the right group or that they can all talk to each other and not feel like anyone's gonna like Judge them for a stupid question or not be helpful or whatever like it's an awesome group of people 
and I've been look, trying to figure out for a long time how to get us tighter and tighter. So I think this Facebook group that's private is the next goal. There's already over 300 people in it. There's been a ton of people getting answers, help and such. So really encourage you to join that. And then also we have the Karma Speed Instagram profile where we're posting all the subscribers cars. So if you guys want to check out other cars in the community, find like-minded individuals with the same car, Instagram. If you want to have questions, create conversation, talk a little bit, go join us on Facebook. All the links are in the description. And then a new thing, I want to see some before and afters on our Instagram stories. So if you have a before clip, tag Karma Speed, and then we can hit the quick add to story button and then post another clip or photo or video or whatever of the after and tag Karma Speed as well. And we can post before and afters. And I think over time we can eventually get a bunch of people like it'll be so big that at least one or two people will be modding their car every day and we'll be able to see it before and after. Um, and I think that's the funnest part. So it'll get everyone involved. We have the photos, we have the Facebook group. So I hope that gives you an idea of what is going on here and what the Commerce Speed brand is about is building confidence in the garage and pulling everyone together and um, everyone just being positive. So I appreciate you stopping by. I had a blast with this. I can't wait to do some more point of view driving videos with that gauge cluster now. I'm working on getting an exhaust ASAP, but this whole coronavirus thing is throwing everything off. So huge shout out to infotainment, link in the description. They came through for the Corona quarantine entertainment. So I appreciate them. I hope you guys do as well. Check out the playlist on the screen. And um, I mean, what else are you gonna do? I love you, I love you, I love you like la 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 la.